Welcome to my video. Today, I'm going to show you how to understand and interpret the minimums for the Norwood RNAV35 approach. I've recreated the profile view of the approach to explain to you um, all the minimums, okay? We'll start with the LPV minimums. This would be, this would be a minimum that you would use um, if your uh, GPS had loss. So let's say your clearance is maintained 2,000 feet until established, cleared for the RNF 35. That means you're being vectored for the approach. So that means that you can ignore this, and you're actually going to fly 2,000 feet until established. Now, the final approach fix for, um, for an approach when you have a glide slope is not the Maltese cross. It's actually this bolt here, which is the glide slope intercept. But since your, your altitude assignment is 2,000 feet, you're actually going to intercept the glide slope over here before Cupac. So your final approach fix is now here the glide slope intercept, which will happen before Cupa. So you can disregard the Maltese cross and also Cupa. Now, this star, Fiegel, is for LNAV approaches only. So you can also disregard that. So when you're flying this approach, when your GPS has WAS, all you care about is the glide slope intercept at 2,000 feet, and you're going to follow that all the way down to your LPV DA minimum. If your GPS does not have a loss, that means that you're going to fly this approach down to your LNAV NDA minimums. Okay, so if you had this clearance, this would mean that you would be flying 2,000 feet, so we're also going to disregard curly. But once you are cleared for the approach, that means you can descend down when you're established. So what it's really going to look like is you're going to be at 2,000 feet. Once you're established on a final approach course, then you would kind of descend down to 1,700 feet and then level off. You absolutely cannot go below 1,700 feet. This final approach fix sign is only if you have WAS and you're intercepting the glide slope, so you're disregarding that. You're going to maintain 1,700 feet until you reach Koopa. From that point, you have to descend down and cross Figo at or above 600 feet. So realistically, you're not going to fly down and then cross Figo at 600. What you're most likely going to do is kind of descend at your own comfortable rate, and then Maintain 600 feet until you cross Fiegel. Once that happens, once you cross Fiegel at or above 500 feet uh, or 600 feet, you're going to descend down to your NDA minimum of 580 feet. And you're going to maintain that until you reach your MDA missed approach point. Now, the missed approach point for an M MDA LNAV um, approach minimum is always the runway, um, the runway threshold. Now, even though the approach, the profile view shows that you're going to start your missed approach around here, that's actually only for. Um, the LPV DA minimums, but if you're flying the LNAV MDA minimums, your missed approach point is now runway 35. So really, you're going to fly your altitude until this point, and then you're going to execute your missed. The profile view doesn't show that, but that's exactly how you're supposed to execute the approach.
Now, if you're flying your approach without a loss down to your LNAV MDA minimums, legally speaking, you can maintain 580 feet until you've reached the missed approach point. If you see the runway at the missed approach point at 580 feet, legally speaking, you can go ahead and descend and land. But sometimes your airplane is too fast. Sometimes the runway is too short. So when you see the runway, you know, at 580 feet uh, MSL, you're going to be too high. So you're most likely not going to be able to make that landing. Even if you're legally allowed to make that landing at this point, there's a big chance that you might not be able to do it. So the best way to fly this approach is actually by using a VDP, which is visual descent point. Okay, so realistically, you want to see the airport some at some point before your missed approach point. And that's exactly what the VDP is. It's a calculation of finding out which, which point or how much nautical miles before the missed approach point you want to be able to see the runway so that you can go ahead and descend. That is usually what a lot of people use as their personal minimums uh, of their missed approach point instead of the legal missed approach point. Okay, so here's how we're going to calculate it. Okay, you're going to find the altitude uh, in AGL that you want to descend from, and in this case, it's uh, 531. And you want to divide that by 300. Because at 300 is usually just the number that will get you a nice and stabilized three degree descent rate, okay? You're going to, if you divide that, you're going to get 1.77. Now that number represents the nautical mile. So that means that you want to be at 580 feet 1.77 nautical miles before the runway to be able to land. Because if you see the runway at any point after 1.77 nautical miles, the FAA deems that you might have to make a steeper approach than what they usually want you to, okay? So that's what a lot of people use as minimums. But look, 1.77 not, seven, seven nautical miles is actually before FIGO. It's actually around this point right here. So even though the VDP says that you want to be at 580, 1.77 nautical miles to make a decision, this approach states that at FIGO, you have to cross at 600 feet. So in this particular approach, you calculated your VDP at 1.77 nautical miles. The best way to go about it is actually using FIGO as your missed approach point. So the best way to do it, to execute this approach, um, not best way, the safest way to execute this approach is at FIGO, at 600 feet, if you don't see the runway, you go ahead and execute your mist. If at this point, anytime after FIGO, you see the airport, uh, that, mean, that still means that you can land. But because of your VDP and your personal minimums, which is what most people do, you have already made the decision to go mist. So really, this is how your approach is gonna look like if you don't have a WAS and you want to be safe. Now, if you're executing a circling approach, the circling minimum is an MDA minimum. The Norman RNAV 3.5 approach does have this uh, black box with the C in it, which means, um, for us, it just means that at our approach speed, uh, we want to start circling at 1.3 nautical miles before the runway. Okay, so 
with this kind of clearance, again, we're going to disregard curly because that means that we're being vectored to final. So most likely what's going to happen, again, we're going to fly at 2,000 feet. Once we are established on the final approach course, we're going to descend down to 1,700 feet. Cross Kupak at or above that. Then we're going to descend down to 600 feet. and maintain that until we reach Fiegel. Now, after we get to Fiegel, um, our circling minimum in this case is also 600 feet. So we want to maintain this altitude the entire time until we see the runway. So really, here's how it's going to happen. At Fiegel, um, obviously continue 600 feet you're going to maintain that and ideally you want to circle at 1.3 nautical miles which is based on our approach category But if you look at the approach, the approach actually says that our circling minimum is one nautical mile, or one mile, one statute mile, not 1.3. So our circling minimum is actually going to be around here. Okay? So that's one mile. Our protected ideal approach is 1.3. Figo is 1.6. Now, usually you would want to start your circle here, but again, if the approach minimum is one nautical mile, you may begin your approach at one nautical mile from the runway if you see it. So this is how your you, you want to execute your circling minimum. Now, an important note here as well is that you can execute a circling minimum if your GPS has WAS, which in this case means that you're going to get a glide slope. Um, you may fly the glide slope, follow it if you want, but you have to remember that you have to level off at 600 feet because the circling minimum is an MDA minimum and not go below it the entire time. So you may use your glide slope up until 600 feet. And then at that point you have to maintain it until your minimums. Now in a circling approach, when you see the runway environment and you go visual and start circling, here's how you want to execute your mist. Okay? Let's say that the winds are favoring runway 28 and runway 28 is in use. Now, this is a mix of the airport diagram, the airport view, combined with the plan view, just to kind of, so you can visualize how to execute your mist, okay? This little arrow here represents where, you're go where the approach leads you to, which is straight in runway 35, and here is the mist approach procedure, okay? Now, when you go visual, you're going to be around here. If runway 28 is in use, most likely you're going to execute this kind of entry. You're kind of going to do a left base to runway 28. Now, remember that you can theoretically up to the runway threshold see runway 28. So when you see runway 28 here, if you want, you can go ahead and execute uh, fly over the runway 28 because it might be too tight for a left base 28 
you can go ahead, fly over the runway, and then execute a downwind for runway 28. Okay? As long as you're visual, it is allowed for you to fly over the airport, do whatever is safest for you to then go ahead and join the final for runway 28. Okay? Now, if you're going to execute the mist, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If you go ahead and do the left base runway 28, you go ahead and try to land, but something happens. You, you bounced, you decide to abort your landing for whatever reason. You can't continue to land. So you go ahead and go mist. The mist approach procedure for runway 35 is actually, you know, go ahead and daggy. Runway 28 does not have a mist approach procedure. Even if you're landing on runway 28 on a circling approach, the, uh, the approach is for runway 35. So if you're going mist on landing on runway 28, the mist approach procedure that you have to execute is of the RNF 35. Okay? So if you're here, you're airborne here, common misconception is for you to make the right turn to go to Daegi. You don't want to do that. What you really want to do is make a left turn to rejoin the missed approach procedure and then go to Daegi. Why is that? It's because you want to fly into the airport because there is guaranteed uh, obstruction clearance. If you kind of fly outside of the airport, depending on where you are in airports that are in mountainous areas, you might fly right into terrain. So when you execute a miss in a circling approach, be sure to circle into the airport to the missed approach point, okay? So you don't want to make, in this case, that right turn into Norwood. You want to make the left turn and then execute your mist.